Hey you and welcome to lesson 15. Today we will talk about have and has and have got and has got. How to differentiate between them and how to use them. We'll also talk about how to say your phone number correctly and we will uh, cover the subject and the object pronouns. Also we'll talk about how to introduce your friends. So you ready? Let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with have and has. Have or have got, has or has got, is used to talk mainly about possessions or personal attributes. Okay, possessions, it means something that you own. Personal attributes is uh, to describe something about yourself, like I have dark hair, okay, or I've got dark hair. Now, uh, I have a fancy suitcase. My friend has a huge bedroom. Uh, I have a fancy suitcase that is possession, something I own. My friend has a huge bedroom, something my friend owns. It consists of he, she, it, Singular noun and uh, plus has. So what does that mean? That means uh, we use has with uh, he, she, it, or single noun. Oops. Okay. Let's, let's redo this again. Make it smaller. Okay. So has... It's used with he, she, it, or single nouns, okay? And have is used with the others. Uh, I, you, we, they, and plurals. Okay, so you must remember this too. Have, has, and have. Has it with single or he, she, it. Have with plurals and are you, we, they. Okay. Uh, are you, we, they, plural nouns. Okay. Now let's take a look at some examples. They have some precious books to study. So have books. It's, pl it's plural noun. Lisa has. It's one person, single noun. Okay? Um, what you must pay attention to also is the apostrophe S. The apostrophe S is... Um, the apostrophe S is used. It means one of these things. If we have an apostrophe S, that means it's either... short for has or is or possessive s. So there are three reasons you use apostrophe s. The first reason is he's got a car. So here we use the apostrophe s short for has. He's got a car. He has got a car. The second one, she's. She's running. Here we use apostrophe s as a form of a contraction for is. She is running. She's running. The last one is Jack's car is red. This is possessive S. That means Jack owns this car and this is his car. Jack's car is red. Okay, so let's take a look at present and past forms of have and has. So has uh, with singles, he, she, it, have, with plurals, are you, we, they, in the past, they all make one past, and that is had. Th so the past of has and have is had. The verb have is one of the, mo one of the two. It's either frequently used in English. It can be used in two different functions. Okay, so we must pay attention here because the verb have and has 
is used as a main verb or as an auxiliary verb. This is important to know how to treat the verb. So either the verb have is the main verb, the action verb, or it is an auxiliary, a helping verb. So how to, to, to differentiate, how to distinguish, how to know when the have is a main verb or when it is a, a helping verb. Let's take a look. If it's a main verb, that means there is no other main verbs. There is no other main verb. It is the main verb. Okay, so when there is no other main verbs of the sentence, that means have is the main verb. Like for example, for example, he has an old house in the village. He has an old house in the village. Now this is not uh, a helping verb. This is not an auxiliary. This is the main verb. It means he owns a house in the village. Auxiliary verb is when there is a main verb in the sentence and have or has is just are used there as a helping verb or an auxiliary verb. Okay, let's see. He has finished his task recently. He has finished his task recently. So we know has here is not the main verb because the main verb is finished have got or has got or without got works the same that means if we say i have or i have got or he has or he has got is the same thing it, it, it has no um, it, there is no difference it's just that i have is considered a little bit more formal than i've got also i have is american i have got is british but it's the exact same thing uh, we, it's used to talk mainly about possessions or personal attributes, okay? So let's take a look at some examples. I've got a new computer. They've got some red chili. She's got long hair. He's got a lot of friends. So either personal attributes, it means something you, you, you have, or something you own. Possessions. We use have got and has got. And for, the, for those exact same sentences, we can just use have or has without the got. So here, I've got a new computer. I have a new computer. They've got some red chili peppers. They have some red chili peppers. She's got long brown hair. She has long brown hair. He's got a lot of friends. He has a lot of friends. So no difference in the meaning, none whatsoever. The negative form uh, is we just add not so have will become have not or haven't has will become has not or hasn't uh, if we use have got or uh, has got then the negative will be hasn't got or haven't got okay let's uh, take a look at some examples uh, he has got three children. He hasn't got any children. She has an elder brother. She hasn't any sisters. Okay, so uh, we can say he has got, he hasn't got any children, or we can also say he hasn't any children. It is both, they're both are correct. They have got a beautiful garden with lots of trees. He has uh, a friendly, okay, let's, uh, let's uh, change this to negative. They have got a beautiful garden with lots of trees. Make it negative. They haven't got a beautiful garden with lots of trees. He has a friendly family. He hasn't a friendly family. Let's take a look at this note. Let's like take a look at this note. Uh, note, which one to use, have or have got? The expressions have and have got actually mean the same thing. Okay, so it doesn't matter. 
The only difference between have and have got is when you are making a negative statement or a question. Okay, we will take a look at how you make a negative statement or a question, which is the only difference. Have got in, uh, in a question will be have you got, okay? Have you got a pencil? Have you got uh, a, a spare tire? Okay, so have you got. Now, the negative have got will be haven't got or hasn't got. Like, uh, I haven't got the time or she hasn't got any money. Okay, now if we are talking about the uh, American have or has, the difference is in the question form and the negative form. So, haven't got or hasn't got will become don't have. So, I haven't got the time it will become I don't have the time. If it was in the case of the question, have you got a spare tire, it will become, do you have a spare tire? So that is the difference when we are making negative statements and questions, but for positive statements, it's exactly the same. Okay, so let's take a look. Have, whoops, have, you structure has plus subject plus got. So that will be, have you got your car license? have or has plus the subject you this is the subject you is a subject uh, and got have you got now if we don't have have got and we just have have then we will use do so it will be do you have your car license and we will just remove the got and have will be after the subject so have you got your car license do you have your car license if it was okay let's take more examples lisa has a new guitar and i have a new flute lisa has got a new guitar and i have got a new flute same thing baby bot and jim have lots to do the house has a big tree in the backyard lisa has a new bike, but she hasn't used it. Now here, if you notice, Lisa has a, a new bike, but she hasn't used it. This is not hasn't got. You cannot use hasn't got here because this is not a possession. Okay? This is uh, an auxiliary this is a helping verb this is an auxiliary she hasn't used it it's not the main verb it is an auxiliary how do you know because there is another verb in the sentence and that other verb is the main verb where is that verb that verb is right here used okay so uh, it is different than the other sentences the house has a big tree this is a main verb baby got uh, baby bought and jim have lots to do main verb i have a new flute main verb lisa has a new guitar main verb but this is not a main verb this is an auxiliary okay the main verb is used okay let's continue i just wanted to point that out to you so you know the difference between the auxiliary and the main verb uh Elliot is having a rest by the pool Elliot is having a rest by the pool you have to buy a new uh, you have to buy a new book Jimmy and Billy Jim and Billy usually have a swim on Saturday okay now let's do an exercise together my dog have or has a long tail which one of course it's has because dog is a single noun the coffee have or has milk in it. The coffee has milk in it because it is uncountable. Okay, and with uncountable, the uncountable, we don't give them have because they don't have a plural form. So we always use the single form with the 
uncountable. They have or has the correct answer. Of course, it's have because they is plural. The flag of Israel have or has a star on it. Of course, the correct answer is has because it, we're talking about one country. I have never or, oh, sorry, I never have or I never has a clean room. The answer is, yeah, of course, it is have because we use have with are you, we, or they. I never have a clean room. The house have or has a lot of furniture. The house has a lot of furniture because it's one. It's one house. The water have or the water has a bad taste. The water has because water is uncountable. So it's treated like single. Okay. Now let's take a look at the American way of using the main verb have or has. So the American way is, I don't have an idea, or I have got an idea. Um, sorry, I have an idea, or I have got an idea, that is in the, in the positive statement. So I have an idea, or I've got an idea, it's the same thing. The negative is a little bit different. So in the negative, we will say, I don't have an idea, or I haven't got an idea. So the negative, as we covered, uh, in a, a, a little while ago, we said the negative form is different because we will use do. I don't have an idea, okay? Or the question form will be also different because I'll say, do you have an idea? While with have got, I will say, have you got an idea? So do you have any idea? Have you got any idea? Other than that, it's all the same. My father has three brothers. My father has got three brothers. Same thing, because it is a positive. Has or has got. My father doesn't have three brothers, or my father hasn't got three brothers. Now it's a little bit different, because it's negative. Does my father have three brothers? Has my father got three brothers. Again, here is different because it's a question. He has a Bentley. He's got a Bentley. Same, because it's a, uh, affirmative. He doesn't have a Bentley. He hasn't got a Bentley. Does he have a Bentley? Has he got a Bentley? So now it's different because it's a question. All right. Now, Let's do a quick exercise to determine if have is the main verb or if it's an auxiliary. The old house has no central heating. The old house has no central heating. This is a main verb because there is no other verbs. Do you have a glass of water? Do you have a glass of water? Again, it's a main verb because there are no other verbs. I have had this computer for three years. I have had this computer for three years. Now here, it's an auxiliary because we have a main verb and it's had. She has had her dog since 2005. She has had her dog since 2005. Again, this is an auxiliary because the main verb is had. Lisa has been singing for 10 years. Lisa has been singing for, oh, sorry, 10 minutes. 10 years sounds a bit long, right? Lisa has been singing for 10 minutes now. So again, has here is an auxiliary because the main verb is singing. All right, uh, that means here is uh, auxiliary and here is auxiliary. So correct answers is main verb, main verb, auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary. All right, my parents had fish for dinner. 
my parents had fish for dinner. So, main verb. Oops, main verb. There are no other verbs. Did you have a shower this morning? Did you have a shower this morning? Again, it is main verb. Why? Because there are no other verbs. Frank had played tennis when he was 12. P Frank had played tennis when he was 12. Auxiliary, because the main verb here is played. Uh, look, the bus is coming. We have to hurry. Look, the bus is coming. We have to hurry. Have to hurry is a main verb because there are no other verbs. Have to hurry. You have to hurry. Mrs. Jo Mrs. Jones written the essay. Oh, sorry. Has Mrs. Jones written the essay? Has Mrs. Jones written the essay? Here is an auxiliary because the main verb is written. All right. Now, let's talk about phone numbers. How do you, uh, how do you ask someone about their phone numbers? And how to tell someone your phone number. So let's take a look. The, the easiest way to ask someone about their phone number is, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? We don't normally say, what is your telephone number? Because nobody says telephone anymore. You just say phone. Okay? The person will normally respond with it, and then they will say their number. Okay? Now, how do you say the number? Let's find out. First thing, mobile phone versus cell phone. Mobile is what they call it in England and the rest of the world, pretty much. Cell phone is only in America. So, cell phone, mobile phone, they're the same thing. Uh, another way of asking someone about their phone number is, what is your mobile number? Or, what is your mobile phone number, which is a bit too long. Nobody says, what's your mobile phone number? Just, what's your number? Okay, what's your number? What's your phone number? But it's also correct if you say, what's your mobile phone number? Maybe you like to talk too much. What's your cell phone number? And a very informal way to ask for someone's phone number is by using digits instead of number. This is slang. Digits is slang for number. So you say, w can I have your digits? Or what are your digits? Can I have your digits? This is slang. Street talk. Uh, very informal. Okay, now how to say a telephone number in English. Basically, when you say a telephone number in English, you, um, you say each individual number. Okay? And uh, so if it's, for example, this is your phone number, you will say, uh, what's your phone number? You, you will start with it, and then you will say the number. It's 3692-5847. 3692-5847. Or, uh, or if it has a zero in it, we normally don't say zero. We say O, oh, okay? So if there is a zero, we say O, oh. okay? That means, let's say this is your phone number. So you say it's 5059-1023. 5059-1023. Okay. Now, if you have consecutive numbers, it means double numbers. Uh, if a phone number contains two of the same number, then you will use double. Okay, so we will say 5178-3369. All right. Uh, if you have three of the same number, we normally say triple. Okay, so like take a look at this number. 
how do you say this number? You say 2149-8777. 2149-8777. Okay. Um, to sum up, this is how you say your phone numbers and you pronounce each number individually. If you have a zero, you say an O. If you have two numbers, uh, two of the same numbers after each other, you say double. If you have three of the same numbers, you say triple, and you are all set with phone numbers. Now, let's take a look at pronouns. What are pronouns? We said that pronouns are words that take the place of a noun. They replace a noun. So, we have... Uh, we have more than one type of pronouns. Today we will talk about two pronouns, which are the subject pronoun, which we have previously covered, and the object pronouns, which we haven't covered yet. Let's see. The subject pronoun is a pronoun that replaces the subject. A pronoun that replaces the subject in the sentences. Like, for example, if in the sentence I say, Jim, uh, plays soccer okay if Jim plays soccer then the pronoun will uh, will remove Jim and will put he instead of Jim so the subject pronoun it, rem it replaces the subject we remove the name or remove the the person and we just put a pronoun that refers to that person now object pronoun is the same idea but instead of removing the subject we remove the object so if we say um, uh, if we say he plays football okay uh, he plays soccer we will say he he plays it it would refer to soccer because it uh, soccer is a non-living thing, okay? So we will say, he plays it, which is soccer. Let's take a look at the list of, now of pronouns. So these are the subject pronouns. I, you, he, she, it, we, you again, and they. Why do we put you twice? Because you is used with the singular, and it's also used with plurals. So I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. In the object pronouns, the I will become me. The I will be me. You will stay you. He will become him. She will become her. It will stay it. We will become us. You will stay you. They will become them. So, uh, how do we use it in sentences? Let's take a look. I like your dress. We use the subject pronoun as the subject of the verb. So, we will underline the verbs uh, in the next uh, sentences, uh, or we will highlight them so you would know where the verb is. And the I will be the subject of that verb. So, I like your dress. The subject here is I, and the verb is like. You are late. The subject here is you, and the verb is are. He is my friend. He. It is raining. It. She is on holiday. She. We live in England. So the subject is we. They come from England, and that is they. Now, if we, are, if we are talking about object pronouns, we will see that in this case, the verb will be uh, underlined, and we will use the pronoun to replace the object and not the subject. Let's take a look. Can you help me? Okay. It means the verb is being requested for me, the object. I can see you. I can see you. You're the object of the verb. You are the object of the seeing. 
does, uh, she doesn't like him. The verb is like, and the object of the verb, oops, the object of the verb is him. She doesn't like him. He is the object of the verb. I saw her. I saw her. She is the object of the verb, and the verb is saw. These are, this is it for today. I, there is a quick quiz at the end, which I would like you to take. Um, don't skip the quiz, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good one.